What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of the My Player Career Mode. We've got three more games for you all to enjoy today and we are kick-starting it off with the game against West Bromwich Albion. Three very interesting games at that as well. I will show you them as they come but they are three highly competitive and good quality games. Now, the first one, as I said, is against West Brom and as it stands, Derby are chasing the playoffs at the moment. We are very, very early into the season, but I think that's a realistic aim, given the way that we've started, especially with us up front. We are we are scoring, but not as much as I maybe had hoped we would. But uh, we're still doing bits, at least, for the team. You know, we're able to help our teammates create chances and all of that stuff. But as you see there, eighth place is currently where we do find ourselves. There is potential for us to get top two, but that is going to have to be a good run of results that we need to get together ASAP, otherwise you're kind of running very, very slowly. So uh, we're winning a game, then dropping points elsewhere, then maybe losing one, then back to winning. So we need to find some consistent form. Unfortunately, I don't show, I'm not sure that that's actually going to come here because the Hawthorns, as you guys know, West Brom are probably one of the more stronger sides in the championship this season, especially with their lineup. Kyle Bartley, Craig Dawson, Hagazi, Gibbs, Gareth Barry in there here as well. Dwight Gale up front, Jay Rodriguez alongside that. Some quality players in that West Brom side, no denying it. For Derby, though, that is their lineup on your screen. Scott Carson in goal, of course, who has been um, interesting, to say the least, at the beginning of this one. And uh, Jose Foon on the right-hand side, which I believe I pronounced that correct. I apologise if I didn't. The first chance, though, fell towards West Bromwich Albion, and it was Dwight Gale who got it. I was so angry with the way that this ball actually went in the back of the net. Dwight Gale is one of those players that will just tear apart the championship. But is he quite good enough for this next step up, which is the Premier League? I'm not so sure. But in the championship, the guy is magnificent. And then, look at this. He picks up the ball, tries a couple of step-overs, realises he's really going nowhere, continues his run forward, fakes it with a body feint, and goes around the man and smashes it in. Now, at first, I put that down to horrific defending, which it is. But also, Scott Carson, for me, doesn't do enough in goal to actually try and save that. So, uh... Less largely frustrated, we very nearly found a good equaliser with 20 minutes left when we tried a pot shot from outside the area, curling one goalwards, but it came back off the upright and genuinely, I was frustrated. I, I don't know how that didn't end up going in. The, the crossbar there, if we'd have got it slightly lower, couple of inches, it would have been 1-1 and it would have been some goal to uh, equalise the scoring up here at the Hawthorns. But sadly, Dwight Gale's strike with the stepovers that he created is the only goal of the game. Now, we didn't particularly deserve anything from it because after that first shot in the 70th minute, that's not good enough. You know, it took us 70 minutes to actually create a chance and it came from us having one from the edge of the area. But, uh, you know, losing it 1-0 to the goal that way we did, I'm not so sure about that one either. But that game, we put it to bed because we had to take on Birmingham next. And this game, let me tell you this right now, was absolutely unreal. There is a, a pretty good, thrilling game coming your way right now. Um... And all I'll say about it is there's some interesting goals, there's some bangers, and there's just overall horrific defending, which seems to be the case here in this year's game of the My Player Career Mode. Seems to be that we're going to get some really poor goalkeeping and potentially really bad defending, but that's the way it's going to see. So, Martin to climb here. Nine goals conceded for Derby, 12 scored for Birmingham. The lowest conceded in the division against the lowest scored, right? You're expecting this to be a nil-niller. Nope, wasn't the case. Oh my goodness me. Now I've seen that, because I actually didn't know that before we played this game. Now I've seen it back in the editing, guys. I, uh, I don't know what to make too much of this game. But both players shaking hands then. And we were ready to get the thing underway at Pride Park. And I said we needed to get a uh, run of results going, because we are yet to do it. Well, that defeat to the uh, West Brom earlier didn't help us. But then, inside six minutes here at Pride Park, we got the dream start to the game. Mason Mount sending us through... Holding our composure and firing it in the bottom corner to give Derby the lead inside the first 10 minutes of play. Dead fish to celebrate as well, because why not? We like that life, you know, we're going to do that. As uh, the boys came over to, uh, to give us a pat on the back and enjoy with the celebrations. But the problem for me was that this goal went in a little bit too early. Have you heard the term about scoring too early in football? I think that that was exactly what happened here at Pride Park. Only eight minutes played. And already in front. Sometimes it can be a good thing. Then other times it can be the worst thing possible. But Frank clearly enjoying that on the touchline. You can see why. Because we were 1-0 in front. But then, disaster struck. Birmingham City, to their credit, they caused us problems on the day. This is 
a really good goal. Honestly, they tore open this Derby back line so, so well. And Lucas Jiao was the man to find his way through. Carson came out. You can't blame him for it. You know, uh, I blame him for a lot of stuff in the series. But I can't blame him for this one because it was just really nice play from Birmingham. Um, and not great defending from Derby. So, for Scarson, it was difficult for him because he had a choice to make. He could have stayed on his line or chose to come out. In the end, he chose the second option, coming out to try and get to the ball before Lucas Jao could put it in. Chose, in the end, wrong because Jao scored the goal. But the defenders have to take a look at themselves and say that that simply was not good enough. We'd only played 15 or 16 minutes here at Pride Park and there had already been two goals. And you can bet your bottom dollar there was going to be more in the game. Jukovic got himself in down the left, put the cross in towards Jao again. And all of a sudden, five minutes later, Birmingham had struck twice in five minutes to make it Birmingham 2, Derby County 1. Lucas Chow with them both as well. And this one I can blame Carson. He came into no man's land for the cross and got absolutely nowhere near it. Not good defending from Andre Wisdom in the middle who should have cut off Lucas Chow. And you can actually see on that replay there, I'm not so sure that that hit him on the head. I'm going to say that there was a little bit of shoulder, potentially maybe even arm involved in there. But of course, he celebrates. Referee gave nothing of the sort. And Derby, who were winning as of 16 minutes, had conceded twice in five to begin losing the tie. Not great. Lucas Jiao causing them problems. Then 30 minutes on the clock. Craig Gardner's corner in towards the middle. Carson comes again. Decides in the end to not really do much of, uh, of anything there. Yukovic's back and towards the edge of the area. And then number eight had his effort. Um, Scott Carson touched it, but didn't keep it out. Oh, dear me. In I don't quite know how this happened. 30 minutes of play, and uh, all of a sudden, it had gone from being Derby 1, Birmingham 0, to Birmingham 3, Derby 1. At Pride Park as well. This wasn't away. This was at home. I mean, how do you even begin to explain what was happening here? It's horrific again, defensively. This time again, I think Carson should do better. But then again, he does see it quite late. It does go past the body. But he does get a strong hand to it. You can see he's close to keeping it out. He just doesn't... He's not able to get enough power behind it to actually push it over the top of the crossbar. Um, and actually got the number wrong. He's actually number six. I tell a lie. He was number six. My bad for that. But even so, three goals in 15, 16 minutes of play. And the tie was completely turned on its head. But... We kept fighting till the very, very end. And we put ourselves back into a one-goal region with 40 minutes gone. Crazy first half here at Pride Park that saw five goals in it. And this, for me, was the pick of the bunch. I knew full well what we wanted to do once we got that ball played into feet, which was to turn it on the left-hand side and try and get our shot away. And that's exactly what we did. And we were able to get the goal back for our side and make it 3-2. The thing is, guys, we're paid to put the ball in the back of the net. And we only had two chances and we did that twice. So we can't be blamed for this result. And with five minutes to play, the keeper pulled off what I can only describe as an unbelievable save. Thomas Kushak in goal for, uh, for Birmingham. Definitely helping them get the points here at Pride Park. After a crazy first half where there was five goals scored, it ended Birmingham 3 Derby County 2, and they actually were the better side on the day at Pride Park. So the home fans will not be happy with that result. You can understand it completely. Not a good enough performance. We did our job. We were paid to put the ball in the back of the net, and we did it. We did it uh, twice out of the two options that we had available to us. We only had two shots there. We scored the both. So we can't be blamed for that one, I don't think. Um, and you just got to look at it and say that it's poor defending again. And Scott Carson, for me, maybe did make a couple of mistakes. I'm possibly being a bit too harsh on him as well. Mainly because this year I really dislike the goalkeepers. That also is a thing. Um, but even so, another really poor result there. So a loss earlier on to West Brom, 1-0. Then a 3-2 defeat to Birmingham. Saw us slide down the table. We weren't even in the top 10 at that point. So this playoff you know, run that I was talking about is going to have to come at a later stage. Because right now we're not even in the top 10 of the championship. So really going to have to get our act together. And this was a good time to do it. Aston Villa... Inside 16 minutes, we had a pot shot of goal, got the ball back eventually and turned it again. Very much like the chance against West Brom. This time we hit the post and not the crossbar. I mean, it just would not happen for us really, would it? But then we got involved in another chance, 26 minutes on the clock here. This time, instead of shooting, decided to lay the ball off towards Anya, who made the run through. And his powerful finish put us 1-0 in front. The keeper could do absolutely nothing about it. Take another look at this one. He comes out like he's going to actually do anything about it, but the strike is just so accurate, so powerful from Anya that he just doesn't have even a chance. He has no 
Real opportunity here, the goalkeeper, to even save this one. Look at this. Comes out. He's like, I'm going to make myself a hero. Going to save it. But Anya's like, no chance. First time finish. Top bins. Thank you very much, keeper, for the space. Derby 1, Villa 0. But we saw this. We saw this against Birmingham. Then a collapse. So uh, we're going to see if it's going to happen again here. And in the second half, Carson, as much as I've uh, you know, given him a bit of a hard time today, unbelievable save. Good good save, that one, to keep us in the game and still 1-0 in front here. Because this is difficult. It comes in with pace, good volley as well. Kept down low by Yedinak, I believe. And it's a good one-handed save from Scott Carson. But in the end, defending to do which uh, El Ghazi puts the, word, the corner in towards Whelan. It's punched out by Carson. Tuenzebe picks up the loose ball. He lays it off towards Yannick Velassi, whose shot is deflected in. And it's Derby 1, Villa 1. Oh, my goodness me. This is typical DJ Wood conceding right now. Oh, this goal. This goal is just beyond ridiculous. Andre Wisdom turns his back on this as well, which is even worse. I tell my team that I coach outside. To never turn your back on the ball. Look at this, man. Why is he jumping like that? It takes a deflection. Ends up going bottom corner. And uh, Derby won. Villa won. So, even though, you know, we had the lead again. We've thrown it away again. But uh, we'll see if we can get ourselves back on in front in the game. As a chance fell, we got a cross in towards the middle. It was Mason Mount glancing header. Didn't get the direction on it and put it wide of the post. Still one apiece here at Pride Park. And as the time ticked away, there was time for one more opportunity. This time for Villa. Yannick Balassi, I mean, again, defensively all over the place from Derby. He gets another opportunity. This time he smacks one against the woodwork. And then we didn't clear our lines, passing it straight back to them. And uh, Balassi again with the shot, this time wide of the post. So luckily, we got ourselves a single point from this. But when you consider the fact that we took the lead against Birmingham, ended up losing that 3-2, took the lead against Villa, ended up drawing it 1-1, and then ended up losing 1-0 to West Brom in the first game. That's three defeats. So sorry, two defeats and a draw out of three games here today. So uh, match facts, you can see right there, dominance, but not able to defend. That's the problem. So these running results are going to have to start from the next episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching this one. I apologize for the delay. I did have a game with my team earlier on this morning, and then I went out for a meal in the afternoon. So, of course, I got back a little bit later than usual. But thank you all so much for watching. If you did enjoy it, a like would be greatly appreciated. As always, thank you all as well for your continued support on the channel. I appreciate that as well. If you are around here and like what you see, the subscribe button is down below. Click that. Follow me on the channel. Hit the notification bell as well alongside it if you want to be notified whenever a new video goes live. And until next time, guys. Hope you all enjoy whatever it is you get up to, and I'll catch you all again very, very soon. See you all then. Adios.